What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Sophie's Sofa. Today, we have a very special guest. She's a dear friend. Her name is Lauren Gomez. She just started her own podcast, Laying Low. Guys, if you guys have not listened to it, the link is going to be down below in the description box. She's amazing. And I listened to it and I learned so much about her, about people who might be like her. So thank you for starting the podcast and spreading awareness. And thank you for being here on Sophie's Sofa. So how are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. I've never done anything like this. So I'm excited to be doing it with you for the first time. First um, of many. Yes, first of many, hopefully. Um, I'm doing good. Just hanging out, chilling, regular day. Same here, same here. Amazing. So to start off, let's give our audience a little bit more about who you are. Give us like a broad art overview, where you grew up, maybe where you're from, what you do for fun, things like that. Just who's going okay. So my name is Lauren. As Sophie said, I am 24 years old. I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. Um, My family is of Cuban descent, so fully Cuban all around, like most of us here. Um, I went to a really small private school for high school. Um, I did a few years of college, and then I just decided that I wasn't going to continue. So I did about two years, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so let's jump into the podcast. I think this is one of the things that is very exciting in your life right now, very up and coming. So tell me, did you wake up one day and say, I want a podcast? Or was this a thought that you've had for a long period of time? Just how did Laying Low come about? So I've been listening to podcasts for like two or three years. It's something I just always did in passing to pass the time while I was driving. I used to have longer commutes for work. So it always really kept me entertained. And I just always loved listening to podcasts. And every time I would catch myself listening to a podcast, I would always say, man, I kind of wish that they would talk about this, or I wish there was a podcast that would touch more on mental health or touch more on a deeper level. I was craving that connection that I felt um, on the podcast while listening to them. I just didn't feel as connected as I wanted to. And so I always said I want to start a podcast, but I just never like put my big girl pants on and decided to do it. So I just bought a mic one day off of Amazon and I was like, you know what, like, let's just do it. Like, what's the worst that could happen? So I decided to put myself out there. It actually took me like nine recordings to get the first episode done because I was so nervous in front of a mic. It's a lot harder than it looks or seems. Um, And so that's pretty much how it came about. The name actually came to me like just one random day um, in high school that used to call me low a lot. And so um, one day I was just thinking like, what could I name it? And it took me about a week and then I just came with laying low and I was like, wow, that actually sounds pretty catchy. And so that's how the name came about. No, I, I love the name. I think it goes perfectly. And I, I'm, I'm a sucker for like alliteration, like Sophie <laughs> Sofa, laying yeah. low. Like, I just love things like that. They make me happy, those simple things in life. Me too. So, yeah. So tell me a little bit about what the podcast is going to be about and what your goal with it is. So at first I thought it was going to be more like a lifestyle podcast where I can kind of just talk about anything, but I wanted to find more of a niche for it and give it like a cadence. So it's kind of a personal journal is the way I'm kind of seeing it. Every guest that I want to have on the podcast, there is going to be a specific type of theme or topic that we will be discussing in relation to mental health in a way. So it's not just a mental health podcast because there will be individual and personal stories of everybody's life that is on the podcast, but I always want to somehow uh, revolve it around mental health and how it does affect your mental health in whatever situation it is that you're going through. 100%. And I think what's really important is that you're going to bring people on, right? And you're going to have different things to speak about in this big realm of mental health because there's so much in that world that people might not realize. Like, I can talk about six different spectrums of mental health, exactly. especially in the whole eating disorder world. I'm pretty, like, I've posted about it. I'm super open about it. But that's a whole world that I'm like, dang, I wish there was a podcast I could have listened to when I was really struggling. Yeah. And it could have been a huge help. Like, who knows? But the fact that you can have so many different avenues and anyone, like, I feel like everyone struggles at least a little bit with mental health. It's and something. You know, yeah, like, it doesn't have to be super severe, but something little. And I think listening to your podcast can help with that as long as you keep it going and you have multiple episodes of all different types of things. Exactly. Yeah, my goal is to definitely have a lot of different, like, niches per episode. So 
although some episodes might be funnier than others, some might be a little more serious, I want there to be at least one episode for everybody listening that they could listen to and relate to it. That's definitely my overall goal with it. Right. And so you're starting off the podcast with by talking about yourself. And I think that's super important because people are like, who is Lauren? They won't listen to anything else if they don't know who you are. So uh, can I talk about your thought process about what you want to share about yourself? And you can touch a little bit on maybe what you've struggled with with mental health and maybe some how you dealt with some, some of the things, things like that. Okay. Um, so originally, actually, when I started the podcast, it was going to be more like informative, if you will. So the first few times that I recorded, it was just like information about like anxiety, depression, and whatever it is that I was dealing with without putting myself out there. And when I was recording that, I was like, this feels so disconnected. I feel like, yeah, it could help someone, but like, why would people listen? Like they could just listen to a doctor. They can just read about it. Like I wanted them to be able to really engage and see a, like a personal story as to like what I really went through with anxiety and depression. So that's kind of how that came about. And so then when I decided to go ahead and record the episode that I ended up publishing, that is about my own mental health struggles. Um, It was really hard at first. I didn't think I was going to be so public. So I'll kind of back up a little bit and like go over my diagnosis and what happened so that everybody can understand where I'm coming from. So about three years ago, I went on my uh, mental health journey. I had always kind of dealt with anxiety and depression in high school, but it was something that I didn't know about. I, it wasn't talked about in my family. It wasn't talked about at school. It wasn't anything that anybody around me was dealing with. So I really had no idea what was going on. My anxiety was really um, physical. So I would go to competitions like for cheerleading or gymnastics, and I would physically throw up at the end of every um, cheer routine on the mat or any like bars or beam or whatever I was doing for gymnastics. I would literally throw up after because I was so anxious and so overwhelmed. And the only way that my body could like understand what was happening was just by like letting it out. Let me, let me jump in there because yeah. I was, I was a gymnast, right? We, we know. Yeah, that's what I meant. Of course. One of the reasons I had quit, there were so many different things, but it's because the anxiety of like performing or like competing and being all eyes on you was so overwhelming and made me so anxious. Like as my, as levels went on, yeah. I think even more anxious. And it was one thing I was competing level nine and I'm like, no, I cannot do this. Like I was way too anxious. My body started to act weird. I felt weird. And so I went to cheer because in the cheer aspect, I felt like I was part of a team and not all eyes were on me. And I loved it so much more. So, yeah. The same thing happened to me um, with gymnastics. Gymnastics is such an overwhelming sport overall. And I touched on it a little bit in the beginning of my podcast, which is just like that you struggle for that perfection. And I think it was like the anxiety of trying to be perfect was just way too overwhelming, especially because you're so young when you're in gymnastics, Mm -hmm. we were so little and they're like literally telling you that you're fat. You can't do anything right. Like the coaching system is a really abusive and there's, I can go into a whole episode just on gymnastics, but um, have you watched on Netflix, um, the athlete a, yes, the documentary. So accurate. Do an episode on like, your reaction to that in a way because there's so much I want to say I, I want to make a YouTube video on it because that there's so much yes that does happen that's crazy I'm like it was there <laughs> yeah I'm like I have like flashbacks from like coaches that we used to have where I'm like oh crap like that wasn't okay I know. it's crazy I know. so yeah and so I ended up whatever doing gym- gymnastics cheerleading I'm feeling like my anxiety was coming out a lot through there and my mom kind of started to notice um that there was something wrong with me, but she couldn't like pinpoint it because she had never really dealt with anxiety. So fast forward a little bit, I graduate high school and I start working in the service industry. And the service industry is a really tricky place because you kind of struggle to fit in. I know that you work in the service industry as well. Um, and when you start, everybody's like really close, usually like it's like that big family aspect. And so everybody's usually doing the same thing. Everyone's like going out together, hanging out together. And so I was working at the Fountain Blue in Miami. It's a really big pool. Um, And I just wanted to make friends. So I think that that need to like go out and to party and do drugs and all of that 
um, really stemmed from wanting to just find somewhere where I fit in. So all of that began and I ended up leaving that job and working another um, service industry job. And that's when I met like my first serious real boyfriend. And when I started my relationship with him is kind of when I realized like I was really struggling with anxiety and that's when I decided to start therapy. So I started therapy um, like for myself because before I would go to like family therapy and stuff like that. Um, I was going to therapy by myself for about a year and then I just figured out that just therapy alone, like that holistic approach just wasn't enough. I needed a little bit more like my anxiety was so overwhelming. I couldn't drive. I wouldn't be able to sleep through the night. Um, if a, if a rush came into the restaurant, I would have like panic attacks behind the kitchen, like crying, throwing up, like not being able to function because I was so busy and it just became like so unmanageable. Like I couldn't do it anymore. So we, me and my therapist together found me a psychiatrist that we both like felt comfortable with. Cause when you're with a therapist, the goal, if you're on medication is to stay on therapy weekly to make sure that everything is, you know, going according to plan. And, um, you also want to make sure that they have somewhat of a relationship with the psychiatrist that's prescribing you the medication, because that open communication is just makes it a little bit like more helpful. So we found a psychiatrist together, someone that we both like vibed with that we both liked. And I went ahead and met with her and I got my diagnosis. So it's important to mention that like by the time I got to my psychiatrist, I was no longer with the same guy that I was with. I was now newly single and very heavily into like nightlife, uh, bartending, like leaving work at 4 a.m., partying like crazy, all of that. So I meet my psychiatrist and she diagnoses me with minor depression, anxiety disorder, OCD, and PTSD. So of course, hearing um, a diagnosis like that, it was really scary at first. And I also was like, there's no way I have all of that. But when she started to break it down for me, it did start to make a lot more sense. Like OCD isn't like necessarily having to tap something five times. Like not everybody's OCD is like that book OCD that people think it is. It's just more the need to be in control of every situation that you're in. Yeah. Um, especially me when I'm driving, that's where my like OCD really comes out. Um, the anxiety and the depression, I pretty much knew. Um, it's so it's so weird because like I'm I'm genuinely a happy person and like I think I'm a happy person and I think I I like radiate positive energy and I try to, um, but it really comes out when you're just like, sorry, there was a noise. <laughs> It really comes out when like I'm by myself and that's when I notice it the most. And it's like, I get into these ruts where like, I can't even get out of bed for three days. Like, and I, that hasn't happened to me luckily in like over a year, but before starting the medication, it was to the point where my mom was like, you need to eat, like you need to get out, of, you need to see the sun. Like this isn't healthy. Yeah. And so that's where I noticed like the depression coming in. And how, how long ago was this? The diagnosis happened in December of 2018. Got it. So I've been on the medication for a year and a half now. Okay. Um, so yeah, sorry. I'll give you like a timeline. You're good. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, of course. So yeah, December 2018, she diagnoses me with all of that. And I start on Zoloft, which is an antidepressant. And she starts me off on a really small dosage. An average dose is between like 75 milligrams to 150 I started at 25 milligrams and that first month on the medication was December of 2018. And I spent that month completely sober because you're not supposed to mix any kind of drugs or alcohol with antidepressants. It's like, could be like lethal, like it's just not okay. And so I start the medication. I'm like super clean. I'm like, I'm really excited. I'm happy. I'm like, wow, I could do this. Like I felt this like euphoric feeling. Everything was like, more colorful like I swear like it was like it was like being on drugs without needing to be on them I was like wow this is like amazing so that ends up wearing off and by the time the new year comes along I had already kind of like relapsed a bit on new year's I was drinking on new year's I got really drunk because if you mix antidepressants with alcohol it's just it's not pretty so the new year comes along and I'm like, okay, like everything's going to be fine. I'm still on the same dosage of the medication and the medication just kind of stops working. 
And it was really discouraging at first because naturally you were like on this really amazing high and then it just kind of like slaps you in the face. So I started a new year. It's now January of 2019. I'm like, okay, let's just talk to my psychiatrist, see what we can do. So we decided to stay on 25 milligrams and continue with a more holistic approach to what I was going through. So I actually did this really cool thing called group therapy, where you go into the office twice a week and you do an hour session with like four other uh, women or men, like they put you with the same gender um, just because that's how they do it. But they put you in this group and basically you do therapy, but instead of doing it one-on-one, you're doing it in a group. And it's really interesting because everybody's able to feed off of each other and you're able to learn from other people and really connect with them. So I was doing that for a little bit and I actually found that to be super helpful. So if anyone wants to take a more holistic approach, I really recommend uh, seeking out group therapy because it was extremely helpful. Um, So after doing that for about two, three months, uh, my medication just wasn't enough anymore. Your body does become like immune to the dosage. So I decided to then go up to 20 to 50 milligrams. And I was at that dosage up until quarantine came along. So like over a year that I was just on 50 milligrams and I was really happy at that dosage. Everything was not fine, but my, my mood was balanced out for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, and then fast forward a little bit now to like the time that we're in, um, I did end up having to go up again on medication to 75 milligrams because the quarantine with my anxiety and depression that I makes gonna, i was gonna ask like how how does this affect you because i feel like life kind of came to a stop and you have to deal with like this new uh, way of living new routine and i myself feel like i'm going kind of crazy so imagine someone who has more mental health issues how are they dealing with it so talk about like how quarantine has been for you Totally. So um, the beginning of quarantine was really overwhelming. Um, I feel like that unknown factor was really eating at me. I couldn't imagine like, okay, so do I have a job or not? That's a huge thing. Like financially speaking, like I have to still pay bills. Like I still have a car payment, car insurance, rent, all of this. So how am I supposed to pay for my bills? Unemployment wasn't working and it was the most stressful time of my life. My anxiety was through the roof. Um, everything just felt out of my control. And for someone like me that really wants to be in control of every situation that I can be in, it was extremely difficult to have to sit back and kind of just let life happen. So I had to team, I did do weekly therapy sessions over Zoom. So that was definitely um, helpful during quarantine. And even something as simple as wearing a mask was too much. Like it was just so overwhelming. So I reached out to my psychiatrist and I just let her know. And she actually reassured me and told me that most, almost all of her patients had to either go up on medication or start something new or change something up in their routine because everybody was severely struggling with having to be at home 24 seven in the middle of a pandemic. Like you have no idea what's going on. You can't do anything about it. You just have to sit at home and like pray that you don't get the disease and hope that you keep everyone around you safe. And so I did go up on my medication, which is something that I was really hesitant to do. I I realized that going up on my medication means that it's gonna take me a little bit longer to get off of them, and that was never my goal. My goal was always to stay pretty low, just because I wanted to eventually wean off of them and be able to you know, battle this on my own. Mm-hmm. But while I talked to her and she reassured me and like made me just feel more comfortable with it. I decided to try it out for two weeks just to see how I would feel. And I actually felt 10 times better. I was able to get out of bed and be productive and do things, even though I was in quarantine, which is what made me feel good. I started to pick up hobbies like coloring and like random arts and crafts. I started planting like just random stuff like that to like pass the time. And that made it a lot better, but it definitely wasn't without like outside help. And let's switch gears a little bit. How do you deal with the stigma behind taking medication and the stigma behind saying, hey, yeah, I've been diagnosed with anxiety, depression, PTSD, and all this. Like, is it easy for you to go ahead and just talk about it? Or do you feel guarded in a way? Like, how do you deal with that whole, with how society puts that negative stigma on it? 
so it's actually kind of hard, I think, to deal with it at first. In the beginning, I was super hesitant to tell anybody. I thought it was something to be ashamed of. I thought it was like something that I did wrong, like that I could didn't know how to handle my own emotions, my mental health. I was out of control of myself, basically. So in the beginning, I actually didn't tell anybody. It was this like big secret, like I'm on antidepressants, I can't say anything to anyone. And then I decided to use it as a form of empowerment. Like I care about myself and my mental health so much. And I care about the people around me so much that I want to do things to better myself. And so if taking medication is what's going to make me feel better, just like if you break your leg and you need to take pain medication because you're in pain and you need to be easier to be around because you're in pain, you're going to just take those pain meds and move on. So I'm doing the same thing, except my medication needs to last a little bit longer because it's a whole journey. So I'm not only on the medication just so that I could, you know, be on it and feel better. It's so that I have the opportunity to build up my own way of dealing with things. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. And I think it's important to always be open about it, even though it might be difficult, because like you said, not that you're like super, well, you can say it, like you're very proud of how you're handling this and how you're like actually taking control for once in your life about your own health. And I think anyone can connect that with anything that they're going through. So if I can even think about myself and like with my eating disorder, I, every year on National Eating Disorder Awareness Week, I always post like so much information and make a huge post on Instagram. And my parents always say, you know, like, why are you doing that? Like, why do you want people to know? And it's a thing that Hispanic, like pride, I think that has to do with it. And I always say, you know what? Like, I'm so proud of how I've come and how I've handled it. And I want someone else to, I don't care if it's one person, because I feel like when it comes about to impacting someone, you don't care who it is. And when you have them say like, oh, I kind of feel the same way she does, or I want to do something similar she does. And then it's about helping people. And I think that that's a great goal in life because we're, we all together, we're all human, you know, and we all go through our struggles. And it's, it would be a shame if we all go through struggles behind closed doors, because then we're the only ones really struggling. Like there's no one else is gaining or help, like being helped by us, you know? Of so I think course. it's extremely important to be open about everything. Yeah. And that's definitely a big thing too. Like with the podcast that I was, I was like, I can't be the only one. Like, there's just no way that I'm the only one dealing with this right now. And no one's talking about it. So if they're not going to talk about it, then I'm willing to do it. And if I can just reach one person and it's crazy because like the feedback I've gotten has been amazing. And so many people that I would have never even expected have like reached out and let me know, like your story really helped you with this. And just hearing that makes it all worth it. It makes all the time, effort, everything that we've put into what we do just so worth it because all I wanted to do was reach one person, help one person out. And so I think definitely helping people is the end game for sure. Of course. Okay. So that's a great end note to end on. Thank you so much for being here. There's so much more that we can possibly talk about, but you're going to talk about it on your podcast. So <laughs> everyone's going to stay tuned. How can people watch it? I know it's on Apple, but is it also on yeah. other platforms? So it's on seven platforms actually, but the most popular platforms that you can find it on are going to be Apple, Spotify, and Anchor. Those are like the three main spots. Um, easiest way to find it will probably be Apple if you have an iPhone. Um, there's episodes every Tuesday at 7 a.m. Um, and you can just type in laying low to Spotify, Apple, wherever, and you can find it there or you can click the link below. Okay. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. And thank you, Lauren, for being here. Follow her Instagram. Check out the podcast, Laying Low. And we'll see you guys next time on the next episode of Sophie Sofa. Bye.